Welcome back guys, it's Israel. So I've seen that you guys really liked my video about taking your Angular app and packaging it into an Electron app. So it's only fair that I keep the series going, right? By showing you guys now how to create an installer for that same Electron app. So that just by clicking on the installer without doing anything else, it will install your Electron app on your computer without having to do any other steps. I'm gonna show you guys the easiest and fastest way to create an installer for your Electron app using Electron Forge. So let's get into it. But before we do that, I just quickly want to give a shout out to all my channel members who allow me to keep creating videos like these. If you guys also want to support the channel or want to see your name here, or you want access to all the repos for all my videos on my channel, you can go and join by clicking the link in the description. But now let's get into the project. So before we dive into the project, I just really want to explain what is Electron Forge and why I chose it. So Electron Forge, to give you the definition, is an all-in-one tool for packaging and distributing Electron applications. So if you guys have worked in Electron for a while, you probably know that, you know, if you want to package your app, you have to use some type of packager. If you want to sign it, some type of signer, installers for creating installers, uh, rebuild, etc. All these different types of functionalities were different packages that you needed to do. So to achieve something, you had to go and find whatever packager you needed or whatever installer that you needed. And they were all separate things. Electron Forge was like, hey, we are Electron. Why don't we create our own all encompassing place where developers can just go straight to Forge and they can do all of these things inside of this nice and easy to use thing. So that is what Electron Forge is. It contains the ability to do all of these things without individually having to go to each one. Exactly like it says here, Electron Forge is an all-in-one solution that unifies the fractured ecosystem that we had before. But you can also compare and say, hey, isn't Electron Builder sort of like that? Doesn't it use the same stuff? Doesn't it do the same thing and it's been around for a while? And, you know, I've used it on other things, right? Why should I go to Electron Forge, right? Why go to here when Electron Builder is just fine? Well, I'm here to say that they are very similar. They really achieve the same thing. Electron Builder is more mature, while Electron Forge really comes straight from Electron. So those are really the differences. And I think it just really goes down to personal preference of what you find easier to understand. Personally, for me, Electron Forge is easier to understand, but Electron Builder can be easier to you because maybe you have more experience with it. But personally to me, I think they are very equal. Uh, but here they're going to obviously give you the benefits of using Forge is that it is a first party tool because it is straight from Electron, unlike a community driven project like is Electron Builder, though Electron Builder is again very mature and does literally everything that Forge does, if not maybe even more. And again, I think Forge is easier to use. It really tells you exactly what it's using. If you're missing something, uh, it's really well spaced out and laid out. And we're going to see that when we get into the project. Well, I do think Electron Builder is slightly more confusing and worded differently. But again, I think they're very equal. I think it's just really up to you. But in this project, we're using Electron Forge and we are going to get to the point where we are going to create an installer for our Electron app. So let's get into the project. All right, guys. So now we're at the project. If you guys watched my Angular app to Electron video, I'm going to be using the exact same project from this time, basically picking off from where that video ended. So as you guys can see, we have our packaged Electron app right here. So I'm going to go find it in my file explorer and you guys will see that we have our packaged app right here. So if I double click here, we're going to see that we're going to get our Electron app with our Angular app inside of it. If you guys didn't remember, the project that I have here, if I just run ng serve, is just a regular Angular tutorial video. There's nothing special about it because obviously the main focus of the previous video was on Electron. But if you don't believe me, let me just show you what's on localhost 4200. And it is just as basic Angular app. So that's all that's there. The main focus here was obviously packaging that Angular app and turning it into an Electron app, just like I showed right here. But obviously, this Electron app isn't installed. It is in this file system right here. So if I were to drag this out of here, it wouldn't have the necessary things to work. Also, let's say I was going to send this to a friend, right? And I'm like, hey, use my Electron app. Well, I would have to send them and they would have to know where to place this. They would know, need to know how to align this file system and know kind of what to do with it, right? It's not as easy as just like, hey, here's this little thing, double click it and it's going to install itself on your desktop 
and then boom, you have your app working, right? So we want that simplicity. That's the installer we want to create at the end of this video. So I want to be able to then just be like, Hey, here's this executable, double click on it. It's going to install my app. And that now you can just start working with it. You don't need all these files. You don't have to be confused with what's all of this stuff and then create your shortcut manually and all that stuff. All of that will be taken care of by this installer. So now that we've done that, let's start setting up our Electron app with Electron Forge. So we're at the Angular project, guys. So obviously there are these Angular files here. We can ignore them. You can ignore them in your project as well. This is an Angular video and you don't really need to make any changes here. Everything's gonna happen with Electron and Electron Forge. You really need to pay attention to your app.js, which again is the entry point where Electron will find the Angular pages, as well as where we set up Electron and the window and all of that good stuff. And then once we import Electron Forge, it will add in a few more files and changes. There are also two ways of importing Electron Forge. There is one using a command and one is manual. I'm going to show you guys how to do it with the command, but I will also manually show you what you would have to create step by step to achieve the same result. So let's go. So first you guys need to kind of go out of your project. Don't be in the source. Don't be in the app. Kind of get out to your master file and you're going to first run this command. So first you're going to run npm install dash dash save dev at Electron dash Forge backslash CLI and enter. And once that one's installed, the next one is going to be npm exec dash dash package equals at electron forge backslash CLI dash C. And you're going to run the command electron forge import. That is the command. So once electron forge finishes installing, you should see something like thanks for using electron forge. So at this point, electron forge has tried to take your electron app and mold it into what forge needs to be able to run properly. So you'll see that you have this forge.config.js. You'll also see that it probably tried to install the dependencies for all of these that it needs. Whenever I tried to go through this the first time, it had issues and it actually didn't NPM install this. So I'm about to check and see if it actually worked this time. But if not, I have all the commands and I'll put all of them in the description for the NPM installs for each one of these to install them in case Forge didn't do it for you as well. But let's move ahead. The other thing that Electron Forge did is if you go to your package.json, it should have changed some of your scripts right here. Your start now turns into Electron Forge start. Your Electron build stays the same. Your electrons stay the same. And so do these three, but these bottom two, you now have a package and a make. So this one is now going to do the packaging. This one is going to make your installer. So it gets added in here. And these are your edits in packages.json, as well as you have this forge.config.js now, and you're going to have to make one more change to your app.js, but these are really the changes that you have to make. So let's say you couldn't import it for some reason. You didn't want to run it, right? If you want to start doing this manually, let me walk you through. The first one is you're going to have to do this npm install. And this is basically installing CLI, the maker squirrel, maker deb and maker zip, which are essentially some of these that you're going to need. So that's the first step of this. So you need to run this. Then you're going to need to configure your package.json. And essentially what that means is you're going to need to add in these scripts in your package.json, essentially the start electron forge, electron forge package, electron forge make and electron forge publish, which are essentially the changes that happen in here whenever you do the import. And then the last thing that you'll need to do that the import automatically does versus the manual is that you'll need to create your forge.config.js. So you'll need to create this file here. So essentially that's what happens automatically on the import using that command versus if you have to do it manually, this is all that you have to create. So again, you'll see that it's really not a lot of things. It's really the changes to the package.json and then creating your forge.config.js as well as then just making sure that you have all of these installed. So once we have this, now we can move on to the next step of setting up Electron Forge. So once you've installed it, the next thing that you're going to need to do is you're going to need Electron Squirrel Startup. So you're going to have to run this NPM install as well. So it's going to be NPM install Electron Squirrel Startup and press enter. So once you've installed that, what you're going to need to do is go to your app.js or main.js or whatever you called it. And you need to put this line of code up at the top. This if statement for electron scroll startup is basically just handling uh, setup events very quickly. And you need to have this, right? So this is also a change. And the only change that you're going to need to make in this JS file. And you guys might be a little confused with what is the squirrel dot windows. And essentially what it is, it, it is the tool 
that generates the three files we're gonna see when we actually create our installer. So that is what it's doing in the background. So you keep seeing the squirrel, squirrel, squirrel. It is basically the thing that is generating the files that we're gonna see once we actually get our installer. Now, once you have this, the other thing that I wanna make sure that you guys have is that you do have Electron installed. And if you don't have it, you might need to run just a quick NPM install Electron just to make sure that all that is set up because obviously that is a dependency. So you need to make sure that you have that. And before checking if I have any of these correctly installed, after just running the import straight from Electron Forge, I am gonna run the Electron Forge make and see if I can get my installer to be created immediately or if I have to install some NPM packages. So let's see. So the command I'm gonna run is NPM run make and let's see if I get any errors. So I already got my first error. Basically, can't find plugin fuses. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna import that. And this is lining up very nicely with what happened to me on the first one. So we're gonna run this command and I'm gonna walk you through this and I don't wanna cut it out of the video because I wanna show you guys possible areas that you guys might run into because I ran into this and I'm running into it again. So that electron forge command that is like manually installs everything doesn't manually install everything. So what you're gonna need to do is you might have to install these as you run into errors, just keep knocking out, just, just swatting at them like if they're little bugs. So the first one is gonna be plug and fuses. So NPM install, electron forge, plug and fuses. Once you have this one installed, try and run npm run make and see if you get another error. Okay, so I actually made it farther than I thought I was gonna do without doing a lot more npm installs. So basically I believe this time around the Electron Forge imp automatic import did a lot more than it did for me the first time I tried this and I only had to do the plugin fuses. Uh, but you might have to install Maker Zip, Maker Squirrel, Maker Deb, all of those. I will have their NPM install paths in the description in case you guys just want to quickly copy them. If you guys actually run into those errors, I want to just have them quickly because I ran into them once and I'd rather not have you guys go and Google and search for them. I can just put them in the description because I wrote them down. But I'm getting a different error now. And it is that attempting to build package from Electron app dot nu spec and it needs authors and it needs a description so this is basically saying that for our installer we need to have a little bit more information and i know exactly where to go to do this essentially what it's asking for is to go in here and we're going to need to add this thing so basically it just wants an author and it wants a description and that's what we're giving it we're going into this makers for the maker squirrel and we're giving it the author which is going to be me my YT Electron Angular app, and I'm giving it a description to subscribe. So that's all we need here. Now that we have that saved, let's go back and run NPM run make. All right, guys, so it finished running. As you can see, it says that it took two minutes and one seconds, and it should say if yours worked correctly that there is some artifact available at whatever folder uh, that your project is at. So let's go check out what Electron Forge created for us. But right before we do that, if you guys have found this video helpful, please drop a like on this video and subscribe so you don't miss any of the other wonderful content on my channel. And in case you guys are wondering, hey, I'm not on Windows, I need Mac or Linux. Well, these are exactly the commands that you have to run for Electron Forge make, dash dash whatever, dash dash whatever. These are the ones that you guys can pause the video here and make a note of it if you're on Linux or Mac or if you're just Windows, right? It's still just Electron Forge Make, but just wanted to bring this up for you guys in case you guys are on a different OS. This is how you would then create your installer for that given operating system. So let's go find this make folder. So right here, if you see, you have the out and the make. So let's open that in File Explorer. You're gonna have this make scroll.windows, which is what I was explaining, where scroll.windows is what creates the actual files that you'll need. And right here are the three files that I talked about. So let's start closing these down just so I can show this as best as I can. So this setup, this is your installer. This is the thing that's going to install it. So I'm going to double click it. And what's going to happen is it's going to just automatically be installed on my desktop. There is this green little animation that comes up. This is the installer. This is it getting installed on my computer. And there is this window that came up right here. And this is it installed. And if you don't, if you want me to prove it, I'm gonna go over here. And this is the shortcut that gets automatically put on my desktop. And if I go to the file location, you're gonna see that we are now in my user, in my C drive, in my app data, local. And you can see that this project has now been installed inside of here. Uh, and more proof that it's installed now on my computer is if I go to app and features and you should see that it is right here and I can install it. That means that this app by double clicking on this right here 
automatically installed it on my desktop and then created a little shortcut that I have right here. And it's in my app data where all your apps should be. And now I can go ahead and uninstall it and you'll see it disappear. And it's gone now, gone from here. And if I double click it again, it should reinstall the app again on my desktop and it should eventually appear back up here again. So again, run this animation and now it appears again and it's now on my desktop and now it's back as an installed app. So that is how you create an installer. And I know some of you guys might be thinking, oh, well, hey, no, I wanted one of those uh, traditional looking installers, right? That tell you what path do you want to put it at? Um, are there any types of configurations and different ones like that? Well, I have to explain this. So just to add a little bit more information to the Electron Forge and Electron Builder installer, right? Uh, both of them don't directly control the installation process. That is still all on the OS. So that idea of having that pop-up window where you can pick exactly what drive and exactly where you want to put it and customization and stuff like that, that is a custom sophisticated installer that you have to create for each platform. If you want the easy, the more quicker one is this is the installation process. It's using Electron Forge or Electron Builder. They both are going to get to that certain level, but then anything past that, you'll need a custom uh Com more complicated installer, but that is all that you need to do to create an installer for your Electron app. But hey, maybe you're just like, mm, I don't want to use Electron anymore. I want my Angular app to be a little different, to be a progressive web app. Well, if you want to learn how to turn your Angular app into a progressive web app, watch this video right here.